is Brandon and today I'm here to react to episode 10 of Outer Banks aka the final episode. I honestly can't believe I'm on the last episode already like I feel like there's something just so special about this show because I really didn't know anything about it before it premiered. I only saw it and started watching it because I saw it on like the Netflix top list or whatever and I feel like it's very rare nowadays with like the media that we have that a show can kind of just like pop up all of a sudden and you don't know anything about it or have any expectations about it. So not only has it been like a really good show but I think having that on top of it has been really awesome of not really having any expectations prior to going into it of what it was going to be like and I don't think I'm the only one that feels like this. Like I feel like Netflix honestly has a bona fide hit of their own on their hands because you see like a lot of shows especially recently with everyone kind of being stuck inside will pop up for a week or two when they first come out they'll be on the top list or whatever of everything that everyone's watching and I just feel like they kind of you know peak within like a week or two and then they kind of move on to either like the bottom half of the list or just disappear completely and people aren't really talking about it as much anymore. For Outer Banks it's kind of been the opposite like it's been almost a month since it's been out and literally as I'm sitting down to watch this it is number one on Netflix like overall not just number one for tv shows number one overall so I think it has an amazing word of mouth I think it has a very high level of rewatchability where people are going back and rewatching it after they have already seen it I already want to go back and watch it and just see like all the JJ and Key scenes and Sarah and John scenes and stuff like that but we'll see I'm just really excited to wrap this up and see where we head off for season two I'm stressed thank you Goodness, he's dating someone with retail or parents. <laughs> He'd have nowhere to go if not. Shut the flashlight off. They stress me out so much with how much they keep their flashlights on when they're on the run or hiding. Ugh, of course he's still hanging around. Poor Sarah. Like, he knows and he still is out to, like, kill John B. That's insane. Shut the flashlight off. <laughs> hey, that's her necklace, kind of. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. That's what she said to top all those episodes ago. She's, they're so cute. They're perfect for each other, guys. I'm so glad she's there for him. Like, if he had to do this alone, I can't even imagine. Wait. Oh no, who's that? SBI? What's SBI? Sworn SBI and assist local and federal law. SBI. What are they? What the? This is like actually hard to watch because I know I said like in previous episodes he has mental health issues but this is like severe like this is like schizophrenia or like borderline personality like it seems like he's hearing voices <gasps> no get the frick away from her don't you dare touch her don't you touch her how do you believe his word just because he's an adult like I don't understand why his word carries more come on Sarah say it I know it's your brother but say it come on Yeah, good, Sarah. Sarah sees it all. I feel so bad. Like, her, that's her hero. Her dad is her hero, and she's realizing that she has put her faith and her trust in the wrong person. You're saying she's your mentally unstable child. Okay, sir. Okay. Ugh, he's playing you all. It's so stupid. I'm so sick of him winning. Wait, what happened? What happened? Oh, I love her. I freaking love Sarah Cameron so much. She is a queen. And how hard did she meet him that she took him down? He's like, oh, 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 Sarah's a queen, honestly. Like, they could have made her so stereotypical and stupid and just a whiny brat. And, like, they made her so smart and capable and strong. And I will forever be grateful to them for it. This is stressful. <laughs> oh, it's Sarah. Okay. Whew. Yeah, but now she knows that even telling the truth isn't going to work because her dad's just going to paint her as a liar. Jeez. 
I mean, how many people, how many people's lives are going to be destroyed by Ward Cameron? Wait, literally, they're just... Okay, that's... They popped. Like, that's kind of genius. I don't know how no one sees them, but, like, I'll take it. What is his dad's problem all of a sudden? The way these parents talk to their children on this show, most of them, I am, it just makes me so grateful for my parents. Like, they're not perfect, but, like, I've never been told that I'm worthless and a waste of space. Like, that is just freaking, like, you chose to have a kid. You chose to raise a child. Like, you don't get to throw it in their face. It, it astounds me. It astounds me. Like, all these issues can, are so connected to parental figures, you know? Like, John B. searching for his dad, Rafe and not getting the care and help he needs and always seeking his father's approval and his dad not seeing that he needs care and help has led to, like, him doing something that he can never come back from. Sarah's broken now because her dad is not who she thought she was. JJ is constantly, like, just torn apart by his dad. Like, it, it's amazing how you could look at all the different parental dynamics and see how much all these kids are affected by things that their parents do and choices that their parents make, you know? His hair looks so cute. I know that's not the main focus, but it looks so cute. That look that they just shared right there had more chemistry than anything Pope and Key have done all season. What? Wait, why is he being so nice? Why? I'm so confused. Is he like on some medication and he's finally on it? Or something because he picked up pills but I don't know what pills they were for this is heartbreaking because it's almost like you'd rather just your dad be a dick to you all the time so you don't have the hope of this because this is what JJ hangs on to is the hope that his dad will be like this all the time <laughs> who are these people she's like trying to duck her head like they're not gonna notice you're not in a busy crowd honey oh I forgot there's a storm coming crap we started with a storm and now we're gonna end with a storm. Jeez. What is he doing? John B, no! Why is he doing this? Ugh. Like, see, he didn't let him shoot him. So I think it's that guy, the DCS guy that came to pick him up, that's actually the one in Ward's pocket. Which is weird, because why did they make it seem like Shoop was? Because then Shoop could have gone with Peterkin to arrest him and we might not even have this issue. Like he's friends with Ward definitely, but I don't think above like actually doing his job. You know what I mean? He did steal money though. I did forget that part and it just came back to me. <laughs> that is so like um, Star Wars when they're like, oh, that old piece of junk and it's the Millennium Falcon. Why is he constantly so sweaty? Like I know it's not a big issue, but like he is just so sweaty and it makes me so uncomfortable. It's probably also, he hasn't had coke in a while and he's a very big addict, so he's probably going through withdrawals. <gasps> yes, girl. Oh, what are you gonna do, Rafe? Yes, go Key, come on. <gasps> are you freaking serious? How many people are you gonna kill, dude? Come on, JJ. <gasps> yes! Can Pope actually hold his own, though? I guess the anger, probably. Yes! Yes! They're finally winning! I'm so happy. Whoa, Pope's losing it, man. And I'm gonna say what I said last episode, Pope. We all have our issues, not the time. I'm sorry, bud. We gotta go. Like, now. <laughs> Yes! Take that, you biatch. I'm so glad. And Pope, too. Like, they messed with Pope all those episodes back. They beat him up for nothing. So now that it's Pope that's like, stay away from us. Symmetry, guys. I love it. I was just thinking after the episode last time, I was like, they were so happy in the beginning. And now look how, like, what's happened to them. Pope style. Yeah! <laughs> Aww. This is so sad because like the whole core of this show is the friendship like the five of them because I include Sarah in it and like the fact that he has to leave them is just it's so sad. 
<gasps> there she is. I can't believe those people just like took her in a boat. Like you can't just take a 16 year old person and put them in a boat. If she's saying she doesn't want to go. Oh, I'm so glad he found her. I mean, Sarah, we are kind of on a time crunch. So he kind of gave you an IOU through the pogues. So she's going with him. I mean, I don't blame her because what is around for her? She doesn't want to stay with her family, obviously. But I just feel bad that she kind of has to leave everything too. This is insane. How are they going to get out of this? I can't. Into the storm? Um, I don't know much about storms or sailing, but I'm pretty sure like 101 is don't go into storms. JJ said the boat is faster though, right, than all of them, so as long as they can't cut them off. And I think technically once they get into Mexico, they can't follow them. This is crazy. And all I can think about is how cold they must be too. Wait a second. Wait a second. This is his one last play. This is the thing that will definitely put them over into Mexico. This is literally a terrible idea. Like you couldn't have thought of anything worse that would convince them to come back than putting Ward Cameron on the radio. You love, you gotta love to see it. You gotta. I thought you were just saying that like, they don't love each other and they don't know what they are. So how can you now be like, oh, if you love her. I mean, Sarah said that, so Sarah's telling him not to go back. I don't think Sarah wants him to turn back, though. That's the thing. Like, ask her. He's like, screw you, and just throws the radio into him. That's what I would do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at Chook. He's like, excuse me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. He needs the gold. Everything. Everything you took from him. John B! What a speech! Like, yes! Bow down. They are a power couple, man. Sarah and John B. What a speech. That was amazing. Like, I'm coming for you. And I love it because it's like now every night that John B went to bed thinking that his dad might come home. Now it's flipped and every night that Ward Cameron goes to bed, he's not going to know what's going to happen. He doesn't know if John B's going to show up one day, you know, and actually take back what's his. And I freaking love it. It's like that Drake and Josh episode where Megan said she was going to get them back. But what she really did was she didn't pull a prank on them. And it was just the mentality and like the psychology of waiting for something to happen that really was the prank all along because it ate them alive and made them crazy. So have fun, Ward. You ain't winning this time. Okay. I mean, you are 16, so. <laughs> but I, I get, like, I'm glad that they at least, like, had her acknowledge that she wants to stay, you know? Like, I like that it, he wasn't like, I'm bringing you back for your own safety, or her just being, like, had no choice in it. Like, she was like, I'm staying. I appreciate that. What you got to say, buddy boo? I also feel like if Sarah went back home, like, they, they would just lock her up again. Like, it's not like she's going back to her home and everything's gonna be okay. <gasps> oh, they're tipping. That's what I was really afraid of. They know that she will pick the, like, justice over her family. Like, their whole thing's like, family over anything. And, like, she told the officer that Rafe did it. So now the dad's like, we can't trust her. Jeez. JJ. I mean, they're right. No one stopped to listen and hear him. They all just immediately believed Ward. Oh, look at him comfort JJ. Oh, I love that she said they, like John B. and Sarah. This is all Ward and his mechanisms. What? Oh, please tell me they're okay. When did they put life jackets on? Oh, please tell me Sarah's okay. If just he makes it and she... Oh, please tell me Sarah made it. Please. Where's Sarah? Oh, Sarah. Is she alive? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I was like, please tell me it's not one of the cops or something. Oh, they still have the gold, too. Oh, that's awesome. And that's really smart of her to use it to signal for help. Oh, she's so smart. A queen. A queen, guys. Please tell me they see them. I need this to end on a good note. I need it. Especially since JJ Key... And Pope all think their friends are dead. 
I hope they don't blame themselves though. <gasps> now Ray, I like how he said that. Thank you. <laughs> um, excuse me, it's the last minute of the show and we met my favorite character. Aw, look at him comfort her. The Bahamas. No way. They can get it. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna be pretty hard though to get the gold because like the good thing about where they were, it was like their place that they grew up. Like they knew all the back roads and all the secrets and they had connections and stuff like that and it was still so hard to get the gold. So like now thinking how the frick are we gonna get it when we are in like this unknown place or something. I honestly thought it was gonna end with them being like missing and us not know what happened. So I'm so glad they showed that part to us. But oh my gosh, that was such a good episode. I mean, obviously it doesn't look good for Key and Pope and all of them. I feel bad that they like think their friends are dead, but like, I'm just so glad that they're actually alive. That ending was so good, guys. Like I really hope Sarah and John just become like these full on treasure hunters now in the next season, but I just want to say thank you guys all so much for all your reactions and likes on these videos that I've been reacting to. I honestly never expected this when I just randomly saw Outer Banks on the Netflix watch list and was like, hmm, let's check this out one day. I have been blown away consistently when I go to check the comments and see the views and it's just astounding to me. It's been amazing and I am so grateful and so thankful for every single person who's commented and I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss seeing all the comments and reactions and I'm gonna miss Outer Banks and hopefully we don't have to wait too long for season two. I anticipate we will though because that's just kind of Netflix and then adding in that like no one can shoot shows or movies right now anyway. But yeah, thank you guys so much. It has been an amazing, amazing ride. I am gonna go read all the fan fiction I can right now. And if you have any thoughts on the season as a whole or this episode, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments. Thank you guys again so much for so many wonderful comments. It literally has made my day. It's some of the nicest comments I've ever gotten and I just love being able to share the show and all our thoughts and our fangirliness with all of you. It's awesome. So thank you guys all so much for watching not only this video but every single one of my reaction videos and I will see you guys for season two. Bye!